Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where look, look at this beautiful puzzle that I get to have a go at today. It's called Radical Rainbow and it's by Jobo. Um, and well, this has been recommended to us umpteen times over the last 48 hours. And just taking a quick look at this grid, I am not surprised. The, the conceit of this, that this is possible, really is astonishing. Basically, these are real square root sums. So let's say this was 49. You would put the square root of 49 in, in, in the block. And then each of these lines, you can see they're all different colors. They all have a different Sudoku constraint. It's absolutely I mean, it's it's just it's just unbelievable that this solves. It's got three stars out of five on Logic Masters Germany, so hopefully not monstrously hard either. Uh, and a, a litany of of beautiful, beautiful comments. People love this puzzle. Uh, so this is what we're going to have a go at in today's video in a moment or two's time. Um, I've got a few things to say first. Let me start um, by, I suppose, saying thank you um, to Martin Hugh. Hugh Olympus for sharing with us his secret tattoo. I have got a picture, don't worry. Here we go. Here we go. Um, he sent this to us on Instagram. <laughs> he has a 45 tattoo, which is a secret. <laughs> um, I don't know if he just got this because of us, but it, it's... Um, it's incredible. I don't know if anyone else has any Sudoku related tattoos, but if you do, we'd love to see them. But yeah, Martin, all credit to you. Um, I guess tattoos must hurt, especially on your finger. Ouch. Um, but yeah, it is it is truly a secret worth remembering. The number 45, of course, something I only tell my favorite people. Um, now, um, what else? Oh yes, yesterday I mentioned I received a weird message on the Discord server. Um, I noticed it was from someone going by the name of Hildegard, uh, but I haven't heard anything more from them. So just just look out for it. Appar you know, apparently there's a, a lot of concern at the moment about the dangers of AI. Um, so be on the lookout. Um, apart from that, what else? Uh, we've got, we're working hard on the new Sudoku hunt, which is coming up at the start of November, something very special for you. So get on board before then. Um, if you want to be, uh, if you want to be an early bird on the four, four, at 4 PM on the 1st of November, brand new Sudoku hunt incoming on Patreon. Um, we've got our line Sudoku app out and I have two announcements to make related to anniversary stroke birthdays today. I'm going to start with Bobby and Caitlin who celebrate their fourth wedding anniversary today over there in Georgia, one of my favorite states because of course it is the home of Augusta National um, and uh, well actually also Civil Rights Museum which I really really loved when I went there once. Um, anyway, Caitlin wrote us a lovely email, Bobby, about, about the two of you. Uh, she describes your time together as the happiest portion of her life um, and um, talked about your son, Alex, who I think has just turned three. And whenever Mark or, or I appear on the screen, he calls us Markiplier, which is his name for a YouTuber. Anyway, she wishes she had more ways to show you that she loves you and um, will hopefully reading out this message today will will make your day a little bit better. And I think anniversary is a very good, very good reason to have cake. So I hope you have a great day celebrating your fourth anniversary today. And then next, I've got a, a birthday announcement for Joshua from your best friend, Miranda, um, who tells me that you watch every day, Joshua. I'm not sure how old you are, but many happy returns. And thank you very much for watching the channel. Um, and that is all the news. So let's have a look at Radical Rainbow by Jobo. I think Mark did a Jobo puzzle yesterday. I might be wrong. I think I think he did. He, uh, anyway, th this, these are the rules of this puzzle. So we've got normal Sudoku rules applied. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and in every three by three box. Digits in thick bordered squares must be equal to the square root of the two digit number read from top to bottom in the corresponding cage. So those two squares, if they were 49, that would be a seven. Um, other squares are available. Um, all squares must contain a diff, oh, 
Ah, all squares must contain a different digit. Right, so these are all different. And we must try and remember that. I will probably forget that. Um, every square root sign also represents a different constraint. Parity line, red. So this is a parity line. Adjacent digits along the red line must alternate in parity. Okay, so if this is even, this would be odd, and this would be even, and this would be odd, and this would be even. Nori, nori. I've realized I've got the wrong glasses on, haven't I? That's not going to help me, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to switch glasses. There we go. I'm probably unrecognizable now. Um, right, what's the next line? Entropic line. Is this this one? Orange, yes. A set of three sequential cells along the orange line must contain a low, one, two, three, middle, four, five, six, and high, seven, eight, nine digit. So the thing to remember about entropic lines are uh, because each, se each sort of sequence of three cells has to contain one of each, the fourth cell, so if we start there, this cell has to have the same entropy as this cell. So normally that's important. So those two cells have the same entropy. So if this was one, two, three, this would have to be one, two, three. Um, German whisper line, green. Adjacent digits along the green line must differ by at least five. So here, if this square here, well, it's not going to be a one, is it? I've realized that because the square, <laughs> we'd have to put one in here. Ah, not two ones. The square root of 11 is not one. The square root of one is one, and that's going to make that digit very hard to fill. Um, anyway, if this was a one, this square here would have to be at least five different from one. So it'd be six, seven, eight, or nine, in theory, at least. Um, okay, Renban, purple. Digits along the purple line are a set of consecutive non-repeating digits in any order. So if this square was a 1, I keep trying, no, let's make that square a 1, it's a bit more sensible. If this square was a 1, this line would have to contain 2, 3, 4, and 5 to ensure that all together we had a consecutive sequence of digits and they could appear in any order. Whoops, that's, that would be a potential way of filling in the purple line. Um, region sum line, blue, so that's this one. Along a blue line, each line segment within a different 3x3 three three box must sum to the same total. So what that's saying is that these two cells, whatever they sum to, has to be the same as the sum of those three cells. This line segment is in box 5, whoops, and this line segment here is in box 8. So those three digits add up to the same as those two cells. That's actually a different way of expressing what this square root sign represents. Um, thermometer, grey, that's this one. Uh, digits along the thermometer must increase from the bulb to the tip, which are always at the ends of the line. Which end is the bulb and which the tip must be deduced? Okay, so one side of this, let's say that this was the bulb. Um, can I show that somehow? Maybe. Let's try that. Look at that. I can't. Um, the clever... Uh, the brilliant software that Sven has designed, Sudoku Pad, available on all good uh, good outlets, helps us to do that. So this square here, if this was the bulb and this was a uh, two, then this would have to be more than two. So it could be four. This would have to be more than four. And then you have to sort of keep going upwards from bulb to tip, just as mercury would rise along a real thermometer as the temperature rose. So must Sudoku digits rise from the bulb to the tip of our Sudoku thermometers. And that is all the rules. Let's have a go at Radical Rainbow. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm interested in this, actually. I've got a timer in the top right hand corner. It's not increasing. Is this? Maybe I have to click play or something. OK, I've started it now. I don't know why. Normally it just starts on its own. Um, right. OK, so what do we have to do here? Well, I noticed actually that, yeah, there is something I can see immediately, which is a rarity. This square and well, this set of actually I can double click. I wonder whether I could. Um, the set of answers to the square root sums in this puzzle must be a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. Um, what? <laughs> okay, we've got more Svenisms here. Uh, so this is this new notation where if you put in a consecutive sequence, it, it puts four, four hyphen nine rather than four through nine. Um, 
Okay, but the, the, these must be the answers, because if we put 3 as the answer to a square root, then this would be a 9, and 9 is not a two-digit number. So we must have at least 4, which would have an answer of 16, 1, 6. Um, and because these are all different, then, this is a 4 to 9 sextuplet, remote sextuplet. Right, so... What's that doing? Which lines are going to be the most restricted? Parity line is basically not restricted. Entropy line. Ugh, no, I don't really think that's restricted. These two are the same entropy. These two are the same entropy. Whisper line. The whisper line could very well be restricted. I mean, if that's a four. Well, actually, that can't be a five, can it? There's a the tiny trick of... German whispers. You can't put a 5 on a German whisper line because the next digit's impossible because it has to be 5 different from 5 and if you check it out you'll find there's no Sudoku digit that meets that criteria. I mean if that was 4 or 6 we would know exactly what this digit, digit is because 4 and 6 are the monogamous German whisper line digits. They can only go, 4 can only go with 9, 6 can only go with 1. Um, there's no reason. Well, uh, there could be restrictions to do with that sort of thing because of what we have to put in the, as the answer to the square root or the, the the thing we're square rooting. If that's 4, that's 16. No, that doesn't prevent 9. If that's 6... Um... Oh! Ah, right. Hang on, I had not appreciated this. Perhaps actually what we should do is work out what the squares are because I've just realized that I can't put make this six and that's going to be the same for any any answer yes I see look so one of these two is a six one of those two and the way I've worked that out is the square of six is 36 which has a six in it so if we were to make this six this would be 36 we'd have two sixes in box one that's never going to work so you can never put six in any of those <laughs> that's disturbed the ability of uh, of us to have um, of us to have the hyphen thing um, okay so what are the squares we've got 16 oh 25 that's got 5 in it right right there better not be any more of these or I have got a problem because the only place I can put 25 is going to be in one where the 5 which is going to be the bottom digit, is also not sharing a cell with the answer. So I think these two squares have to be a 5-6 pair, and the answers are either 25 or 36, which means these two squares are a 5-6 pair. Um, and they are, well, they are literally a 5-6 pair. They have to be different. These have to be different. These have to be different. And now we can't have five. Oh, hang on, we could never have five there. We can't have five in any of those squares. So these other four um, square root sums are either, well, let's have, we might as well put the answers in. Just It's either going to be 16, which is going to be one there and six there, or 49. I think I'm doing this in the slowest way. Uh, or 64. Let's do that one. Or 81. So 80, 80 on the top and 1 on the bottom. Now, has that helped? 4 goes with 16. 7 goes with 49, 8 goes with 64, 9 goes with 81. Yeah, there are no repeated digits there. So that, that does make sense in terms of the 5 and the 6 having to be slightly offset with their answers. So it's, it's actually a lovely spot, isn't it, that you can create these sums by offsetting the square root sign just so that the answer or the units of the answer tips into another Sudoku box. Um, but... 
Okay, so now if, ah, I see. So if this is middle entropy, which it is, then that one is middle entropy. So that has to be from four, five, and six. And none of these other cells on this line now can be middle entropy. So if I was Mark, I would label these up with one, two, three, and seven, eight, nine. I'm not gonna do that, but I, I'm just going I just want to do it to see if it, no, okay. I wondered whether it would go one hyphen three, seven hyphen nine, but it didn't. Um, uh, what's this line? Oh, this is this is Renban, isn't it? So there has to be a five on this line always because it's a five cell sequence. And if you're selecting five sequential digits from the digits one to nine, even if you start at the lowest digit, you'll go one, two, three, four, five. And if you start at the highest digit, you'll go nine, eight, seven, six, five. So there's always a five on this line. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I could do. Those two digits are the same, aren't they? So one of those digits goes up there. This, this digit, whether it's five or six, appears, oh, it's a parity line. No, I hate parity. Parity lines are not going to be useful, I don't think. Um, what about here? These two digits are the same. Let's give those a color. We'll give those the color of, hmm, these are, these are the questions. What do I think will be a pleasant color? Maybe dark green. So dark green, I mean, I could put that in, but I'm less, I'm actually less, less inclined to because it doesn't have to go on the line here it doesn't have to go on the square root sign whereas here it definitely does it affects the constraint here it might affect the constraint but it might not if it goes there but these digits are the same um oh dear <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing how to do this at all hang on is it the, I'm going to come back and think about the whisper line again. So if this is four, this is one six, this is nine by monogamy. I love the way that you can say nine by monogamy. And to some people, like Sudoku solvers like us, that means something. Um, if that's seven, this has to be low. Seven, 49 gets used up, not useful. If that's eight, six and four gets used up that's not useful nine gives any uh, any option 81 would disappear hmm okay i might be wrong but i don't see what that line's doing what about the thermometer then the th oh yes okay so one end of this line is the bulb it's got to be quite difficult for that to be the bulb I'm just going to think about that actually let me just put the bulb in there if that's the bulb the answer to the square roots well this if this is four this is one six so I can't put six on the thermometer so it would have to be four five seven eight nine four five seven eight nine That's, we then know the parity of this. It, not the parity, sorry. We, if, this is, if this is four, we know this is high. So we know this is high. And it wouldn't have a great many options. Oh, hang on, I'm getting confused now. Um... Because if this is four and this is one six, I'm wiping out an awful lot of digits from here. That's weird, actually. Let me just look at that. Why can't I immediately see? Does that mean this has to be? That's weird. So this has to be four. That has to be seven. Good grief. Wow. Okay. I'm sure this isn't how you start this puzzle, but it's absolutely fascinating. Okay, let's... This is not the bulb of this thermometer, is what I've worked out, which it actually is going to take all the pressure off it, annoyingly. But it's really cool to think about this. So, I'll just explain it. If this is four, this thermometer gets completely determined let's do it slowly four but and it gets completely disturbed determined because this is a one six pair so we need we can we can keep increasing along the thermometer but we can't use six so this all gets completely 
forced. But the, the really cool thing is that... Oh, in fact, there's actually no option. We don't even have to go. There's simply no option that works here, is there? Well, if 1, 6 and 9 come out, this has to be a 4, and there's no possible square. Oh, that's, that's, that's cuter. That, that doesn't even re require me to work out the parity of this line. You simply cannot find a square that works if this is the bulb of the thermometer. Oh, that's very, that's very fair. Okay, that's very clever. Right, so that, that means that this is not the bulb. So we get to take that out. Wah. We get to put a bulb in there, and that can't be 4 now. Because if we're increasing along a length 5 thermometer, even if we start with 1, we're going to get at least to 5 by the time we reach here. So now if this can't be 4, this can't be 1, and this can't be 6. So we've slightly mitigated the number of things that can be going on. That square uh, is 1 to 5, isn't it? Let's put that in. It will hyphenate it. I thought it might. So... Right, what then have we actually learned from this? Have we learned anything? <laughs> I don't know if we have. Oh, you rotten thing. I don't think this is that easy, actually. I mean, I know three stars out of five for difficulty can, can mean just about anything these days, but this is not... Am I thinking about this in the wrong way? I I don't see how I was trying to think about if I if I know both of those I know well I do know both of these have the same polarity in terms of the whisper line so if if, if either they're both below five or they're both above five but I don't think that puts any pressure on down here these could be both below five or they could be one of each or they could be both above five Okay, so it's got to be something else. Ah, all right. So that square is not a six for what that. Well, that will knock something out. This square is not a six because it sees a five-six pair. I don't know which way round these goes, but these go. But I know that the green square here and the yellow square here are different. So that can't be a six which means that can't be an 8, because 8 is associated with 64. Now, have we got any other cells that see both colours? Uh, no, uh, that one does actually, but they can't be 5 or 6, so that's annoying. That doesn't do anything. Um, oh, there might be a bit of children noise in a moment or two. Uh, let's think... Nine. Nine goes with 81, doesn't it? Uh, is that a problem? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> because we've got a five, six pair. Ah, gosh, there are some restrictions. I was going to ignore this parity line, but look. I, was, I, I started to think about parity there. If this is 8, that is a 64. And that uses up three of the even digits in this box. Yet, if this is 8, I need two more even digits on the line. So one of them could be a 2, but the final digit wouldn't work. Right, so this, this might be what we have to do. There might be a way. One of these is now an 8. This, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. If you bump into me at a party, be prepared. Be prepared. I'm full of these things. Did you know? Did you know that you can make a continuous sentence from the word buffalo? Buffalo, 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 buffalo is a real sentence. And I don't know how many buffaloes I said, but I could extrapolate that forever. Because buffalo can be a verb as well as a noun and the place. So buffalo, buffalo, buffalo. 
I don't know why I'm talking about this. It's a thing. Because it it means buffalo. Buffalo, which I think means to buffet, basically. Buffalo, buffet, buffet, buffalo. And then if you add another buffalo, it could be buffalo, buffet, effectively. Buffalo, i.e. from the place buffalo, buffalo. And then you can keep going. Just add on buffalo. It's the same is true for the word smelt. Smelt being a fish and smelt being, you know, a verb. So smelt, 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 smelt. But it's not quite as... It doesn't make it doesn't trip off the tongue in the same way. Anyway, there we go. I got distracted, didn't I? Right, no, no, I know what I was thinking. I was thinking that now eight has to be in one of these squares, which means that sixty four is the answer to one of those, which means that square is not a four anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not the most brilliant deduction ever, is it? Um Is there, if I can get rid of one more, if I can get rid of one more eight from these squares, if there's a reason one of these can't be an eight, I don't think there is though, is there? It's not, it's just not obvious to me. Or if there's a reason we can get rid of two digits, the, the same digit from both of these, what would that likely be? Um, I don't know. No, that doesn't feel right, does it? I don't think that's... I don't think that's that's what we're being asked to do. Um, golly, golly, gosh. Okay. So what could it be? Let me think. Ah, I know what it could be, actually. I've just had another thought. Although I've been focusing on my fives and sixes, can't I focus on the twos and threes as well? Bother, that's not going to work. The, I know these twos and threes, these two digits here are different, and they do see that square, but that square doesn't seem to be allowed to be a two or a three. So that's a shame. So knowing these are different could have, I mean, it does eliminate two and three from this square. It eliminates two and three from this square, but I don't think it does more than that. Okay, um, hmm. so it's got to be something else. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Eight causes six and four to appear as the answer to its square. Is there a reason this can't be eight? Six, four here, this has to be a high digit, but it could be seven or nine, I think. And no, I'm, I'm perplexed. I, I consider myself perplexed here. What has it got to be then? I don't think there's a restriction on this parity line, although I said that last time and then there turned out to be. Is it possible the five and sixes are determined? Well, it's possible, but I don't see how. I've not thought much about the region sum line. I, I mean, maybe that's a mistake because, but the problem with region sum lines is where, where the lengths of the line segments in each box is, are very close to each other. And here we've got a two cell segment versus a three cell segment. There's not a lot of pressure. I mean, if this was an eight, nine pair, then this could add up to as much as 17 or as little as six. If this was one, oh, it can't be six, but say four, one, two, if, if assuming that's possible. And I suppose it's not quite, if that's four, one goes away. Four, two, three might be possible. So the minimum sum of this is nine. I, again, it's just, that does not feel to me like where the pressure lives in the puzzle. Um, 
No, it's got to be something to do with... Well, what could it be to do with? Um, is there a reason that... I don't know. Um... No, I really don't. I'm baffled. I'm actually stuck. I feel stuck as well. I feel like... Maybe... If this is 4, this is 1, 6, isn't it? So then I need to put 2 and 8 into these squares. Is there a reason I can't do that? I don't think there is. I think that's okay. Yeah, one of these could then be a five. That's fine. Um, it can't be the region sum line. I'm going through these constraints trying to work out what's going on. and I'm not doing very well. I apologize. Um, it could be... Hmm... I know one of these is an 8. That, that seems to be the limit of what we learn. We, learn, we know one of these is 64. One of these is 8. Maybe I can do something more with the Renban. I know the Renban's got 5 on it somewhere, but 5 would be much more useful if you knew this was a 6, I feel. I will put 6 up here. Gets rid of 6 from here, which would get... If this couldn't be 6, this couldn't be 4. So this would be odd. This would be odd. This would be odd. 6 would be in one of these two squares. No, that's not doing it, is it? These two are definitely different. I do love the idea that these these green and yellow squares are all different. Oh, there, there you go. Look, that, look at that one. Sorry, I didn't see that one. I was just thinking I do love the idea from a setting perspective of these being different, but that can't be six, I've just noticed. So that one can't be one because that would go with a 16. So that can't be four. So this is down to seven or nine. Oh, well, that's good. That tells us the parity of this, this line all of a sudden. So these two squares are odd. I'm definitely going to write that in. 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Um, so we've almost got look a, we've almost got a quadruple. These have to be even. So they're 2, 4, 6, and 8. Oh, so now the big game in town is can you get rid of... If I could get rid of 8 from here, I'd have a 7-9 pair. If I can get rid of 4 from here, I'd have a 7-9 pair. Right, let's try this one first. If that's 4, that would be 1-6. There's no pressure on this line. It just isn't. It just isn't. Why can't that be 8? If that's 8... This is 6-4. Which knocks out. Oh, I see. That is interesting, isn't it? Oh, okay. So maybe, maybe this is worthy of more investigation. Yeah, because six and four knock out forty-nine and sixteen from the other one. Yeah, so if this is 6, 4, what I'm saying is that this can no longer be 16, and it can be no, it, it can no longer be 49, and, oh, and, and it can no longer obviously be 64. So it's rendered, it's forced then to be 81. So if this is 8, this is forced to be 9. 
which I hadn't appreciated. Eight, nine, whoops, have to go in. And then, have we got anything? Well, we then know from a whispers perspective, these two digits are low. We know this, in fact, we know that's a seven. Oh, that's, this is getting close now to being interesting. Because this being a seven, which it's forced to be, because it's got to be a high digit by polarity on the green whisper, and it can't be eight, and it can't be six, because that would be surrounded at top and bottom by double one because of monogamy. So this digit would have to be a, a seven. And now you can't put seven or six or four anywhere on this. So it would have to go eight, five, three two one and it can't oh i don't believe it is that broken i think it's broken i don't think you can fill this there's not enough digits let's do it let's do it very slowly five three two and you can't make this one good grief okay that's really well it's very difficult for me to spot at least but it's true isn't it wow okay so that's huge because now, well, we need to reinstate everything here. Uh, or do we? Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Because what we've now worked out is this can't be 8. And if this can't be 8, I mean, there may be reasons it can't be other things as well. But that's a 7-9 pair. So this is not 7 or 9. Oh, this, this is 4. That's huge. So that's 16. Um, this is 8. <laughs> this, is, this is 8. So these are high polarity which means six, seven, eight, or nine. That can't be six or eight. This, uh, I don't know about that one. Not so sure. These have to be low digits, one, two, three, or four. That can't be four because it would require double nine in these squares. Uh, that, that could perhaps be four with double nine in these squares. Don't know, but there's probably loads we can do now because if this is 7 or 9, this is 49 or 81. If this is 7 or 9, again, this is 49 or 81. Um, and this is 8, so this is 60. Oh, this is 64, and that means that can't be a 4. So that's got to be 8, that's got to be 1, that's got to be 9. So that's got to be 7. This has got to be 49. Oh, good grief. This is actually, we're actually making quite rapid progress all of a sudden. This is now yellow, of all things, because it can't be green. These can't be nine. <laughs> um, this is a six, so these are both five. So this is now two, 25 s s ah, square rooted is five. So that's six, that's six, that's six, that's three. Oh, I thought I was going to get that digit. Not quite. Uh, these can't be four. Um, this isn't six or eight. So this is seven or nine. Which, it can't be two. Looking at Sudoku. Oh, it can't be nine. That's just a seven. So that's a one. That's the only digit that's five away. So this isn't one. Sorry, as you probably heard, I thought it was better to step away and let uh, let the uh, shenanigans calm down. Um, so I'm back now. Uh, I can't remember what I was doing, but I'm I'm back. Um, okay, I was doing the whisper line, which looks like it's it looks like it's done. I've got I've, I've, I remember sort of what I was doing. Uh, that can't be a two by Sudoku. Let's just see if we can carry on as if nothing has happened. Uh, oh, I was about to say I could put six into that box, but that's totally not true. Um, I do seem to have a lot of sixes in the grid, though. Yes, I can put a six in the middle box and I can Oh, nearly put a six here. If I put a six on the thermo. That can't be a five. If this is a five, I can't fill the thermo. Five, six, seven, I'd need an eight, wouldn't I? So that's not five. So this is two or three, which takes all the pressure off it. Uh, no, I was about to say something that's not true. I'm not gonna say that. Two, three, five, two, three, five, and nine into these squares. Let's fully pencil mark that. That can't be three. No, that was that was a, <laughs> that was a foolish thing to do. Um, Hmm. 
Right, where is four in this box is an interesting question because it can't go there. Look, it's, four is the same entropy as five and six. So if we put four there, uh, then these two have the same entropy and that's definitely not allowed. Now that's quite cool because that means that four is on the blue line and whichever one, well, it sort of balances on the blue line with this four. So one of these digits, now the one that's not four, adds up to the same as those two digits. So they definitely deserve a color of their own. So these two add up to something here, which is not right. So this is not a two, three pair now, which is the least it could be, because that would require us to put five on this line to balance it. So we can't actually put six up there either. So it's at least seven with the four. A uh, seven, no, that might be possible. Seven, I was, just, I was just looking at that. So, so if this was four, seven, these two have to add up to seven. It can't be one, six or three, four. So they'd have to be two, five. If we put eight up here, this has to then be not one, seven or two, six. So three, five. And if you put nine up here, not one, eight, not four, five, not three, six, so two, seven. Bobbins. Right, so that's <laughs> okay. These are very slightly restricted, but not in a way that I think I was hoping. Ah, five. No, oh, nearly. I thought I was going to get, if I could get a five on this line, then at least I would know this didn't have nine on it. Okay, four. Four can't go on the, four can't go on the purple line anymore because four, four, four. So this purple line is five, six, seven, eight, nine then. And it's already got, oh, hang on. It's already got the six on it. So we take the six out. That can't be nine. And bother. <laughs> Doesn't, does that really not do anything? Hang on. No, I don't think so. Sorry, I was hopeful, but that was that was foolish of me. Okay, let's try. Do you think it's Sudoku or do we think it's line logic? What about line logic on the entropy line? So this this cell's entropy is the same as that cell's entropy. And I don't really maybe that digit's more restricted actually. That sees five different digits. That's three, four six or no three four or eight only i think i'm just going to pencil mark that so oh and it's not four because four is the same entropy as six right three or eight so if this is three this and this are high entropy so they would have to be from seven eight and nine bobbins <laughs> all right if that's eight Oh, uh, that well, that's more interesting. Okay, that is small. That's a small point. If that's eight, that has to be three, because it must be low entropy, because it can't be middle entropy and it can't be high entropy, and it couldn't be one or two. So that would be three, which means one of those digits is three, because either this is itself three or it's eight, which forces that to be a three. Now, where is? four in row three, not there by Sudoku. So that's a four. Four is now ah, so f Oh, this is great, isn't it? Where's four? Four is now forced onto this thermometer. But if it was here, this would have to be a one. And if it was here, it would clash. So it is there, which means these two digits are lower than four. So they must be three and two in that order. That's beautiful. This is a beautiful puzzle. That's not two or three. Right, right, so that digit's now under pressure, because if this digit was high, i.e. if it's 5 or 7, these are adding up to 12, which we couldn't balance, because the 4s balance off, and then we'd need a 12 to accompany them. So this is low, this is a 2 or a 3, which pairs up with that digit, so that whatever this digit is goes down here. What else have we got left to put in box nine? Five, six, and seven. Hmm. 
No, don't see how to do that. Um, bother. <laughs> oh, hang on. That can't be six by Sudoku. That is the most marginal point. Five or seven. What? What's this digit? Oh, I see. Look, I can still do stuff in this row. Where's six? It's forced. It's got to go there. So this digit is three or eight. And if it's eight, well, all we're saying then is that on the, we're saying that's not eight. Oh, goodness me. Right. Um, I've got an eight, nine pair here. Where do they go in row seven? Well, I think from our pencil marking, they have to go there. So this is an 8-9 pair, and now that one is 9. That's beautiful. That is absolute. This puzzle is sick. It's absolutely brilliant. Right, how do I know this is 9? Well, like by Sudoku, sort of floating Sudoku. Because, let's give that a colour quickly. Um, orange. I don't really want to make it orange, actually. Um, light green. Mm. No, grey. I'll make it grey. Um, where does this digit go in this box is the question I asked myself because I knew it couldn't repeat on its own Remban line. It can't repeat in its own column and it can't go there because that is an 8 and that's a 9 so it's definitely not in that cell which means it's in one of these two squares and that means by Sudoku it's in one of those squares and 8 isn't available as an option so I think that's got to be 9 that's got to be 8 and that knocks 9 off this line so this is a five, seven, eight triple, which, well, oh, I suppose the eight does something, <laughs> that's a three. Oh, that, no, that's important. Because if that's a three and that's an eight, that tells us the entropy of these two digits. We know that's a three, we know this is low entropy. So this is, well, it's one, two or three. Uh, I was presuming I would be able to get rid of at least one of those options, but I, don't think I can. Three is in one of these two squares by Sudoku. The, ah, ah, I've got a one five pair in box one. So these two digits are a two eight pair. And the, oh, and that's not eight. Right, so where's eight go in box one is the sensible question. We could have done that. That eight gives me this digit, which gives me a five seven pair. One and five go in. Uh, Two is in one of those squares by Sudoku. What about... That's not... Oh, that's gorgeous. Look what we're going to get here, I think. Yes, we are. <laughs> What's? Where does the three go in column nine? Get ready. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. Um... Four? No, I thought we were going to get four in box um, box two. Two, five, eight, and nine. So this square, oh, this square's naked. How can I not see that, Simon? Yeah, sorry, it's obvious if you sort of look at it. There's two, five, eight there and a two, five, eight there. So this is a two, five, eight triple. And therefore that's got to be a five. So that's a nine, that's a seven. Seven can't go next to three on a whisper, so that's a two. This is not seven anymore by Sudoku. What do we say these were? Eight and two, so that's eight, that's two, that's nine. These two squares are nine, which it must be that one, and six, which is that one. Oh, that gets me the six down there. Leaves a five, seven pair behind it. We should be able to get that digit five, I think, by Sudoku. This is a one, three pair, which we can do. Uh, the five does the five, seven pair back over here, knocking seven out of this. Nine is knocked out of this. This is four, eight. Uh, this square here is something, two. Um, but if this is four, eight, these have to add up to eight. So they've got to be five and three, and we know the order. Five, three, seven, five, uh, Maverick's just about to fly over. I can hear you, Maverick. Hello, Maverick. One. 
Right, what are those digits? Uh, one, four, oh, snooker maximum, one, four, seven. Wow, why can't I type it in? Dexterity not befitting a snooker expert. Um, oh, one is there. So this is a four, seven pair. This is a four, eight pair. No, okay. What about, well, hmm. One in this row has to go there. This is a seven, nine pair. So we're going to get this digit, which is three apparently. Now we should be able to get these digits probably. Seven and eight, yeah, eight and seven can go in. These digits are two and nine, which is now resolved. So two, nine, nine, seven, seven, four, four, eight. These squares here are two, four, and nine. So that's a two, that's a nine, and that's a four. Yeah, it's, it's fallen, hasn't it? it? We have, we have, I think, cracked the code here. Uh, this is one seven, which is resolved. This needs two and three. And this needs uh, four and five, which looks possibly good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that is a fantastic Sudoku puzzle, Jobo. Absolutely extraordinary that that works. And, and that it works with such a lovely path. I mean, I was a bit slow to the beginning, I think. I just didn't twig that there was a big risk. What I didn't twig is that if you put 64 into one of these answer clues, then in that column, it all but wipes out so many options. So it forces 81 into the other, into the other answer and that's what I should have spotted much more quickly um, but even after you get that it's still absolutely beautiful you get to learn about buffaloes and smelts and all sorts of things brilliant loved it let me know in the comments how you got on I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic <laughs>